Hello children, let us resume from where we left yesterday. We were talking about uh, Amenhotep III and now his son came to rule and he was named as Amenhotep IV. He succeeded him, he succeeded his father and initiated one of the strangest periods in the history of ancient Egypt. Why strangest? Let us see the reasons for this. And that is why Amenhotep IV, you know, the things that he did, uh, because of those things, uh, also he is referred to as a little wacky. Wacky means uh, he, he went a little crazy because of his acts. The new pharaoh promoted the worship of the Aten, the sun disk. Changed his name to Akhenaten or servant of the Aten. And moved the religious capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akhenaten, known now as Amarna. Now see, the new pharaoh, that is Amenhotep IV, he did, you know, three things. One, he changed his name to Akhenaten, believed in the worship of not Lord Amun, but Lord Aten. Third, he moved the religious capital from Thebes to Akhenaten, which is now known as Amarna. You can see this uh, image, this right side, right part of this image to see in the red written as Amarna. This is the place where he shifted the capital of Egypt to. He further shocked the country. Now the fourth thing that he did was he attacked Amun, the major god, broke all his images and closed all his tem temples. He's smashing, smashing his images and closing his temples. This he did further. It must have been a horrific time, said Ray Johnson, director of the University of Chicago's research center in Luxor, the site of ancient Thebes. So this director said that it must have been a very terrible, a very horrifying time for everybody. The family that had ruled for centuries was coming to an end and then Akhenaten went a little wacky, wacky, a, a little crazy, uh, you know, uh, very, a little odd. After his death, a mysterious ruler named Smenkhare appeared briefly and exited with hardly a trace. So nothing much happened under his reign, under his rule. And then came King Tut. And then a very young Tutankhaten took the throne, King Tut as he is widely known today. He reigned for about nine years and then died unexpectedly. So he died and his death was a mystery. Regardless of his fame and the speculations about his fate, Tut is one mummy among many in Egypt. Now King Tut enjoyed a huge popularity he was very famous now there are still guesses there are still speculations and calculations about his fate about his destiny but his mummy is one mummy among many in egypt how many no one knows now it is a still it is still a question mark as to how many mummies are there in egypt no one knows it still the Egyptian Mummy Project, that's the name of the project. The Egyptian Mummy Project, which began an inventory in late 2003, has recorded almost 600 so far and is still counting. Now, inventory here refers to, uh, you know, the invention of uh, the discovery of the list of the mummies that have been um, discovered so far. Till late 2003, it was almost 600. And is still counting means now it is 17 years ahead, 17 years more than, you know, uh, what was there in 2003. So what could be the number? You can very well guess. The next phase, scanning the mummies with a portable city machine donated by the National Geographic Society and Siemens, its manufacturer. Now the mummies are taken out and they are scanned by the city machine, city scan machine. 
King Tut is one of the first mummies to be scanned. This is a very important line, dear children. In death, as in life, moving regally ahead of his country, men. Now, this we can refer to it as his body, his, uh, you know, mummy was very important. This statement, you know, it comments upon the place of pride King Tut enjoyed in his life and later in his death. In his life, when he was alive, he, he enjoyed that pride and even in his death, he enjoyed that pride because he was his mummy was the was one of the first mummies to be scanned. King Tut, uh, you know, took up the rule of Egypt when he was very young. He contributed tremendously in restoring the past glory and old ways of his dynasty. But he died a mysterious death and was given a royal burial too. More than 4,000 years later, when technology was used to unravel the mystery of his death, his mummy was the first to enjoy the privilege of such an advanced study. Now, this line will well explain the, uh, you know, uh, this statement which is in front of you. His mummy was the first to enjoy the privilege of the advanced study of city scan. It moved ahead of a train of scientists and technicians. So even in life and even after death, he was ahead of his country men. A city machine scanned the mummy head to toe, creating 1700 digital X-ray images in cross section. With Tut's entire body similarly recorded, a team of specialists in radiology, forensics and anatomy began to probe the secrets that the winged goddesses of a gilded burial shrine protected for so long. Now, uh, all the details of uh, the city scan of King Tut were recorded by the team of uh, specialists such as by a team of experts such as radiologists, the forensic science experts and the anatomy experts. All these people, all these team of experts, all these members of an expert team, they, they began to investigate the secret as to what could be the reason of, you know, uh, this uh, body of King Tut being preserved so well for so long. Maybe it was the winged goddess. Winged goddess here refers to the, um, uh, you know, Osiris is referred to as the winged goddess. So this winged goddess is believed to have protected the burial shrine of uh, made of gold for such a long time. This image, you can see the goddess of Osiris, goddess of afterlife, along with King Tut. This is a mural in the, uh, you know, King Tut's, uh, in, the, in the chamber of the King Tut. The night of the scan, workmen carried Tut from the tomb in his box. As you can see, uh, when he was uh, to be city scanned, the pallbearers, pallbearers are people who lift the uh, on their shoulders the dead bodies or you can say uh, who lift on their shoulders something. So the workmen carried Tut from the tomb in the box. Like pallbearers, they climbed a ramp and a flight of stairs into the swirling sand outside. Swirling is it was Spinning, it was moving very fast. First, they climbed a ramp and then they took some stairs to come out. Then, they along with the body rose on a hydraulic lift. This blue stair-like image is a hydraulic lift, a lift that uses a machine to move heavy objects with a pressure. And after the hydraulic lift, this body was taken into the trailer that held the scanner. City scan. 
20 minutes later two men emerged so from this trailer after 20 minutes two men came out sprinted they came out running at a very high speed for an office nearby and returned with a pair of white plastic fans now why they needed plastic fans let us see the million dollar scanner this costly city scanner machine had quit it had you know uh, it had got damaged it had stopped working because of sand in a cooler fan so this the fan of the cooler got damaged and that is why the machine was not working so because of this these two men ran to an office nearby and came back with a pair of white plastic fans in order to let the machine work again curse of the pharaoh joked a guard nervously so one of the guards there uh, you know gave a joke and said maybe it's because of the curse of the pharaoh now what was the curse of the pharaoh death or misfortune will fall upon those who would disturb the eternal sleep of king tut of the king pharaoh of the young pharaoh eventually finally ultimately the substitute fans worked well enough to finish the procedure the substitute the alternate fans the plastic white plastic fans that the men got from the office nearby they were able to manage the machine it started again and the procedure of ct scan got over after checking that no data had been lost the technicians turned tut over to the workmen who carried him back to his tomb so again the workmen carried the dead body of tomb to the place where he was resting back in the trailer a technician pulled up astonishing images of tut on a computer screen here you can see uh, uh, you know many images of king tut so um, he saw very surprising very shocking images of king tut a gray head took shape from a scattering of pixels pixels as you know is uh, the smallest point in a graphic image and the technician spun spun is he turned around and tilted it in every direction he moved the head in each and every direction tilted it inclined it bent it did whatever uh, he could do to take out the perfect image of his head neck vertebrae appeared as clearly as in an anatomy class anatomy class as i told you where you study the inside of the uh, body as in an anatomy class the students are able to the learners are able to see the inside and study the you know various parts of a human body as clearly as that the neck vertebrae those you know um, series of small bones which form the backbone that neck vertebrae could be seen very clearly other images revealed a hand several views of the rib cage and a transection of the skull but for now the pressure was off the pressure was over the pressure that the pharaoh had given a curse that something bad would something unlucky would happen to those who would disturb his dead body or his mummified body now this pressure was over i didn't sleep last night not for a second he said i was so worried but now i think i will go and sleep this um, you know zahi hawas he said he, he could not sleep he was so worried that something very you know unfortunate might happen with anybody because of uh, you know the disturbance of uh, sleep in king tuts by the time we left the trailer descending metal stairs to the sandy ground the wind had stopped remember uh, the wind had started moving when the body was taken out of the tomb by the pall bearers but by the time the body went back and was kept back into the uh, chamber uh, the wind had stopped after that the winter air lay cold and still like death itself in this valley of the departed valley of the departed valley of the dead 
value of the kings it is also referred to as the value of the departed the winter uh, the, the air during the winter uh, was cold was extremely cold and still there was silence everywhere silence like death itself in the valley of the kings this is what zahi hawas recalls just above the entrance to tut's tomb tut's tomb stood orion the constellation that the ancient egyptians knew as the soul of osiris the god of the after life watching over the boy king and then uh, the writer uh, says that uh, just above the entrance to tut's tomb uh, they could notice um, zahi hawas and his team members could notice the constellation that is orion with the soul of osiris that is the goddess of the afterlife protecting watching over the boy king watching over the young pharaoh and protecting his soul his mummified body now uh, i hope you've understood the explanation of the text of the chapter i've given you line to line explanation in the next slide i have given you the images of the text as it is for you to have a reading these are the expressions that i was talking about you must know the meanings of all these here we have the map that uh, tells you about the value of the kings and uh, the egypt page number 25 of the chapter again the meaning of the difficult expressions funerary treasures circumvented city scan airy detail airy means strange uncanny description is strange description mysterious not normal next page of your text page 26 page 27 where you can see the mural in king tut's tomb showing king tut with osiris the god of the afterlife this is one of the paintings that is there over the uh, king tut's tomb around the king tut's tomb and finally here are the questions and answers next we are going to discuss the questions and answers till then stay safe take care